Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create um, a schematic that corresponds to our current mirror differential amplifier connected up to the pad frame so that we can do LVS on the whole design out to the pads. Um, so the first thing we have here is um, basically uh, the schematic for the cell and a symbol for the cell. And this cell passes LVS against the layout. Um, and what we're going to do is take the uh, pad frame schematic symbols and circuit elements. And I'm going to copy those into my project directory here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the chip schematic. This would correspond to the uh, chip cell in the layout editor. And what we have here is basically a schematic symbol for the pad frame. And then each of these little boxes with a little empty um, square, which is uh, just a port that doesn't have any connection to it, is a blank pad. So you can see I can actually pick up these blank pad things and move them around. Uh, separately from the pad frame. And uh, this is meant to correspond directly to the, um, the pad frame layouts. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to instance my current mirror differential amplifier symbol over here. And I'm going to hook it up to pads and to various um, sort of nets here. So chip VDD, bias, and ground. So I'm going to make a ground connection to the negative rail. I'm going to make a connection to CVDD, the positive rail. I'm going to make a connection to bias. VB. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to instance a couple of in pad symbols and connect them up to the positive and negative inputs. I'm going to instance an in or pad symbol and I'm going to mirror that for the output. And then what I have to do is I have to delete these blank pad symbols over here um, to make up for the three pads cells that I instance over here. So this is my top level uh, schematic with my project over here. And I'm going to save this. Now, um, there is a chip top symbol, which um, basically makes the chip schematic um, a sub-circuit, which is what we need to do uh, the netlist flattening in LVS in Glade. So what I'm going to do is view netlist in order to um, generate the netlist for my design. You can see that the top level here has a sub-circuit instance of chip, and then my chip sub-circuit has the pad frame, a bunch of blank pads, and has my current mirror differential amplifier cell, my two in pads and my in or pad. And then I've got some sub-circuit definitions that correspond to my current mirror differential amplifier, the in pad, the in or pad, the blank pad, and the uh, pad frame. So now that I've got that, it takes a little little doing to um, get my chip top um, netlist prepared properly in order to uh, flatten it. Uh, so we're going to need to do a couple of different things. The first thing we need to do is open it up and we need to put a comment in here to declare net zero which is ground and PVDD as global nets, and that has to come as a comment near the top of the file. 
in order to make Glade's netlist flattener happy. So we're going to save that. Second thing we have to do is to run fixnet on this. And so I'm going to run python fixnet.py uh, chip top dot net chip top fixed dot net. And so if I go out here, we now have that. And we can see that this is working. So all of the three terminal NMOS and PMOS transistors that I used in my current mirror differential amplifier cell have been converted into four terminal uh, MOSFET devices. So that's good. So now we can pull up our, our uh, chip layout in Glade and we can extract this. Okay, let's see. This is where I want to be. So we'll run the extraction script. Does take a little while to extract. There it is. And so we're going to pull up the LVS dialog. And go to browse for our fixed top level chip net. Top cell name is chip. And we're going to select this for our working directory. Run this. Okay, so. Now what I'm going to do is open up my flatten netlist file. And I'm going to put in the dot scale. Dot scale meter for the transistor sizes. So I'm going to pull up Glade again. Go to the LVS dialog and then pull up chip top fixed dot net flat, the flatten netlist file, and run it. And so you can see down here that the netlists match. How cool is that? So the netlists match. There are, are all the nodes were matched. Uh, we have 21 device property errors. Now what these are, these have to do with um, the decoupling capacitors that are inside of the um, inside of the pad frame for chip VDD or core VDD and pad VDD. And you can see if you look at these that um, it is not doing a good job at lining these things up. So here's here's a resistor that's uh, basically 1.55k that it's somehow matched with a 2.28k resistor. But if you look down here, here's the 2.28k resistor and the 1.55k resistor, and it's just not found a correspondence between them. So they stand in the right relationship um, to each other with respect to the nodes, but it hasn't basically found a good correspondence between individual devices. And the, the same is true for the um, decoupling capacitor. So here you see, uh, here's a capacitor that has uh, between N0 and N1, which is 1.64 times 10 to the minus 13 uh, farads. And here's the corresponding value down here. And here's a 1.18 times 10 to the minus 11, here's a 1.18 times 10 to the minus 11. So these do actually match. Um, and so that's how you can do LVS all the way out to the pad frame.